Hello guys, uh, I wanted to share with you something that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks or so. Uh, let me give you a little bit of context here. I've been um, working on some shots that have some organic warping and I was failing uh, with uh, the Mocha um, mesh warp tracking and so I ended up using a um, modified version of uh, Theo's uh, patch pal I was using the trails node instead of the frame average but anyway I was like craving some solution like the nux smart vectors and while researching on it I think I found a way to almost properly replicate the smart vectors in fusion I mean this this workflow is not exactly user-friendly but it works. Uh, I have to say that the warping works perfectly, but the stabilization is... I think uh, they're doing something a little bit different in Nuke, which I haven't quite grasped yet. But anyway, let me show you what I am doing here. So the first thing that I do is to add a custom tool. And in this custom tool, I want to type X in the red channel y in the green channel, 0 in the blue, and 1 in the alpha. So that I get an ST map or um, UV map, call it as you prefer. Then of course we need to add the optical flow. I'm sticking with this advanced method, uh, which I'm not sure why it's called advanced, but you know it's okay and uh, let's set the warp count to 8 the iteration to 16 smoothness to 22 and then we want to extract those vectors in uh, into the RGB channels and I'm going to use the channel booleans for that so I'm going to take the X back vector to the red channel Y back vector to the green channel black in the blue channel and white in the alpha so that uh, we get the vectors in the RGB. Um, before going on let me set this comp to 100 frames so we don't lose too much time in, in this demonstration and something else that we have to do is move into the frame format and set the depth to 32 bits which is kind of essential in this process. Okay, now that we have our vectors in the RGB channels, we want to add a displace and use the vectors to displace our ST map. And we have to move to the XY and we have to add an expression in the X refraction, which will be 1 divided by self input dot original with let's oh, self okay let's copy that into the y refraction and okay we're good to go so um this is basically it now what we want to do with this is to feed this displacing into a feedback loop and at the beginning of my playing around with this technique I was using um, second man's loop uh, macros and, and scripts but in the end uh, thanks to Christoph uh, also from Wisak Less um, I ended up using a different techniques which I'm going to show you now and to do that I'm going to use a dissolve node and in the mix here we want to add an expression and type in if time is bigger than our first frame which is a thousand and one here uh, return one else return zero and we want to add a loader node and we want to pipe it into the foreground of the dissolve node so basically it means that at time zero here 
we get these um, STMAP from the custom tool and from frame one on we're going to get the frame from the loader and we might want to add a time speed and we want to set the interpolation mode to nearest and add a delay of one frame so the last thing that we are missing now is our saver node so now what we want to do is to basically disable everything um, aside our ST map and we just want to render this out before doing that be sure that you are creating an AXR file and that the AXR file is 32 bit float and we want to use the zip 16 lines and ok now we can just render this ok so what we want to do now is re-enable all of our all of our nodes and we want to import the uh, sequence that we have just created and most importantly we want to uh, set the saver from full renders only to high quality interactive and that will mean that as we press play the feedback loop starts so let's press play and see the magic happen okay as you can see something has happened and now what we can do is just grab those and add an ST mapper or a texture node I'm going to use the ST mapper As you can see, we have a little bit of jaggy edges because of, you know, this bump that this snail has. But we can add a blur node on our STMAP sequence and we can get rid of some of it. And let me show you something else we can do. And let's rebuild this very quickly and we can move here and select X vector Y vector and purge cache and we can press play again now we can grab this and again you can use the ST map but this time I'm going to place the footage as the foreground of the ST map and as you can see we have a stabilized plate but anyway uh, I put all this into a macro which uh, enables the uh, reference frame again it's not exactly user-friendly it's a bit convoluted and so I'm showing you how it works let's add the factor warp um, those will come up mm, uh, just ignore them for now and as you can see we have a warp mode or a stabilized mode those are the optical flow settings and then we have the render settings so the first thing that we want to do is to add a save location let's get rid of this and keep the name it's okay and now we want to as this render you know we have a, a full render or clean pass we want to render our clean pass before going any further and so just let's do this as the clean pass is finished we can actually load our sequence 
in our loader here and choose the reference frame which should be 1037 and now what we want to do is from 1037 having the vector warp selected and viewed in the viewer we can render the full render and just press play here as you can see i removed the loop uh, from the playback so that when the um, the playhead uh, hits the last frame everything will stop and not start rendering uh, again from the first frame that's cool let's go back to 1037 and now we want to switch the direction to reverse and just play it reverse from 1037 to 1001 okay so now we should be good to go so now we what we want to do is to we want to merge this one on top and add a brightness contrast and we want to remove the background and this is because you know um, when using this technique you want to have the inputs of the ST mapper to have the same resolution so we can uh, 1037 we can place this one on the back of the guy here and let's play this back and see what happens it sticks nicely and what else let me show you uh, placing this uh, maybe in a different place let's go to our reference frame and let's i don't know stick this here and let's see what happens Remember that you can um, blur the ST map, but as you can see, the sticking is pretty nice. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to uh, post this vector warp to Wisakles to see if anyone wants to contribute to the development of this tool. I'm very excited for this. And I have to say that I, that I already used this successfully in production. And so let me know your thoughts. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.